that the uh, town's engineer who did an independent review is saying that he doesn't think that the design that's being proposed is inappropriate. And that's me paraphrasing his two-page letter. But he's focusing on the additional drainage caused by the new house, not looking comprehensively at the, sub <coughs> at the subdivision to determine whether the existing drainage plan is inadequate. To me, those are two separate issues. And I, I think if I understand him right, that he's only saying, that he could be saying, the drainage out there is problematic, but this is only going to make it a tiny bit more problematic, and this wall will deal with the tiny bit more problematic. However, if you were to reach into the past and say right. that the original proposal was flawed, mm -hmm. you would still need, I would still strongly recommend that you have a technical basis for making that finding. And that would require information that is not currently in the record. Yes. You might want to go to your town engineer and ask them to expand their review. It's an interesting approach. I don't think the board has ever done it, but I, I think you really do need to bulk up what you have for stormwater background information if you want to take that road. Madam, Madam Chair, if it's appropriate, um, yes. and, and I can't speak specifically to the 1991 to the 1992 original stormwater calculations. I have seen that. I can't speak to them. But procedurally, in sort of from the, the sort of the thousand foot view, what was likely done when it was using T, what we call TR20, TR55, whatever methodology was done at the time for the hydraulic, hydrologic analysis, is they would take that subdivision, they would make assumptions about the amount of impervious area, the amount of disturbed area that is being changed from what was the previous land cover type, as we call it, you know, woods, grass, whatever. And, and then fill those calculations, fill those impervious areas and those changes in the, in the land use into, the, into a, a program which came up with, with an assessment of drainage in all the various watersheds. Not saying that all the water went in one direction, it was probably a split of watersheds. And my point being is that when we do these sorts of analyses, we don't typically take each lot and put on the exact building and the exact footprint. We have no idea. We take a reasonable assumption on a reasonable amount of lot that might be developed. And some lots are going to be developed more so than you might have assumed, and some are going to be less so. So there's a factor of safety, and there's a factor, a factor of a cushion in there for the amount of development that you assume. So I can't speak specifically, and I don't intend to, but just in terms of procedurally, when we do a project, if you had a 100 lot subdivision, and someone were to say, and generally the watershed is, is 500 acres, and you're a portion of that 500 acre watershed, and someone added one lot, well, we're looking at the whole this approach looks at how do we deal with our direct abutters in the best way we can. That approach deals with that 500 acre watershed. Does one extra house make a, any difference? Absolutely not. You can't even, it's so infinitesimal relative to the watershed. So a watershed here might be many, many, many acres in terms of looking at a watershed. And that's the way the analysis would have been done for the original subdivision in terms of its overall watersheds. And we know across the street we've got ponds and that sort of thing. And, and I don't, again, I don't know exactly how, but that's, that's the mechanics of it to give you a sense of it was probably done on a much larger scale so that adding a little bit of impervious here and there probably, as Maureen said, probably wouldn't have a significant effect on the overall change in numbers. But when we look at one lot, we can do certain things by doing best management practices like we've done, looking at grading and looking at the drainage topography on a lot specifically and dealing with those things sort of feet on the ground sort of approach. But as I as I read it, I believe this development is has a few years of history already, mm -hmm. and theoretically is one thing, but there must be historical information on actually what's happened rather than what was theoretically judged. Mm -hmm. And listening to comment about runoff present time and, and wet grounds, it may be that calculation or the theory didn't quite match the practice. I don't know. But um, is that history, of, is, the, is there any information in the last few years available as to what the actual situation is rather than the mm -hmm. new calculation about what would happen if you built something like that? If you do a sidewalk, you can see that there is, this is higher than what's on Mitchell Road, the houses on Mitchell Road. Those houses on Mitchell Road are low, water runs to the low point, and there's water there. We're trying to correct some of that 
runoff. What's happened in the last 20 years happened before that because the water was running downhill at that particular time. So the water that's, that's continuing to run down there, I can't say it's more and I can't say it's less. But if I build this house, it will be less simply by the way we're diverting the water to the natural stream. As far as the history, I knew Norman Namey. He was a friend of mine. I was in his house a number of times. He was in my house a number of times. He had this house built, and I can't remember what year it was. All right. But, what's that? 1980. Okay. He never told me that my subdivision added more water to his, to his house. I know George Namey, the executive who sold the house. He's a friend of mine. He never cursed me. I can't sell that house because of the water in the basement. And I've, and I've, been, in, I've been in Norman's house a number of times. I can't say that water running into Norman's house in 1980 was a cause of my subdivision. I'm going to say it is. I'm going to say it was. But nothing was done to correct it. I'm making a proposal now to correct some of that water that's running to his house. And I'm doing that to Mr. Sargent's house also. Thank you, so, Your Honor. I, mean, if, I think that if you do hire an independent person, and, I, and Steve from Harding has been, been on that site since he started work for Oast and, and before, um, and he will agree that if we anything is going to be an improvement, uh, we're going to control a lot of that water. We walked it and saw water pooling up. We had, oh, there's no place for that water to go. It's trapped. Blueberry Ridge, when we developed Blueberry Ridge, we were, we were told that the water is flooding our basements and all of that. When we went in and did that subdivision, we gave the water a place to go and it dried it up. We have catch basins between the South Portland Houses, Gowdy Street, and Blueberry Ridge that are dry as a bone. We, will, we put them in as a safety precaution, but they're not draining water because we gave the water that was pooling up a place to go. That's what we're proposing on this, on this lot now, to give a reason for the water to go somewhere else or, and assist it to go somewhere else to prevent water in their basements. It's not going to be 100% cure because I mentioned water is still coming from this but we're going to do a dandis to take collect as much water as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? So maybe we should go back to scheduling our site walk, after which we may have a better basis for deciding how to go on that. So I guess our options are either Saturday or Sunday if we do that. Do we ever do them on Sunday? Once. Once, okay. So <laughs> Saturday or perhaps an evening the follow early the Monday following week. Monday Monday evening at five o'clock. Yeah. Will that work for people? It's May second. Monday, May second at five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. So we have we're going to be meeting at the end of Rosewood, excuse me, yeah, Rosewood Lane. Is that adequate? I'd have to ask you. I don't know. So it's near the dead end. Near the, right near the dead end. How do we get through to um, this? I understand, but how do you, just park you just walk, walk across this? Park okay, park fair enough. All right. Okay, so meet at the end of Rose, Rosewood Lane? Five o'clock on Monday. Okay. Madam Chairman, could I ask yes. a question of the engineer? Sure. Is there an alternative that is superior to the one that you're suggesting? In terms of drainage and grading? I, I, can't, th I can't say that there would be. If you, you have two things are going on. You've got, I mean, essentially, you've got water that's going, wants to go. As we all know, water will seek its own. You've got a high point here. Essentially, water is going this way, down mm -hmm. you know, from high to low. You've got low spots up here which are reflected, and this is sort of flat up in here. 
you know, this is obviously you've got wetlands up in here. And I, for the life of me, can't think, I mean, without studying this thing to death, it, what we're doing makes a lot of sense. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, have, I have a suggestion and, a, and a, a proposal. I've said a couple of times that I can't collect the water that's coming off my lot three onto this lot. If we have permission, we might move that, those boulders or try to collect some of that water that's coming down here and channel it along the back side of my property and the back side of Danini's. Danini, is, it, is that Danini? Giamani. Giamani. Fellow Italian, I can't. Yeah. We, can, we can try to collect some of that water and channel it over to this corner here and off to this area. By, if you look at it, you will see that this, this ledge here, and it's high, and this portion is also, well, it's a little lower, so the water is naturally going to their foundation of their property. But something can, their house is located up in here, and this is woods. Mm -hmm. Something can be done to collect the water and channel it over here, and we're willing to do that as a, as a solution, and it might help the sergeants of the additional water coming onto their property that we can't legally collect. So we might work with them with that, and that's uh, that suggestion. No, no, it makes sense. Something to explore. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else? I have one question on the affordable housing lots. Is it <coughs> acceptable to do that lot in another subdivision? The, the ordinance does make that provision. Okay. And it is an immediately abutting subdivision. Um, of course, certain notes and other things will have to be reported to formalize that. Right. It can't just be part of this group. I'm sure the applicant will work that out. And if I understand it right, it is on land that was initially part of this subdivision. Is that right? Okay. And the other question that's still somewhat up in the air is the uh, exchange of, of emails regarding the private road, private access way, um, and where we are on that. Is, is this road both a private road and a private access way? Is there a boundary between the two, or is the whole thing a little bit of both? The entire Rosewood Lane was approved as a private road. Right. And it still is a private road. Um, this was approved in the early 90s. In 1997, there was a complete overhaul of the zoning ordinance, and the private access way standards changed um, so that now a private access way can only provide access to one lot. So there's no way that Rosewood Drive can be a private access way. It is absolutely a private road. Uh, the challenge is that uh, this is a traditional subdivision, not a clustered subdivision, and the minimum amount of road frontage that one needs for a new lot is 100 feet. Uh -huh. And if you don't have the amount of frontage you need, and your lot existed prior to 1997, as does this lot, you can create one additional lot that does not have adequate frontage as long as you have a private access way permit. For this, it's a little awkward, but you could go through the requirement of making the applicant come up with a 30-foot wide right-of-way and a road maintenance agreement for a very short section of the existing driveway that is located on lot four. It's really, it's very contrived. So the only section where you would actually have a private access way is a, the front portion of the driveway for the existing lot four. For the Otherwise, existing what we have is a private access way permit over a private road. It's not over the road. It would only be a private access way permit for that lot. Right. For that lot. To make it a buildable lot. Off the private road. Right. And it's, it, you don't need the private access way over Rosewood Lane because so it's in this on case, a the private road. The term private access way is not a physical piece of land, but the term private access way really means a private access way easement. It really means that you've 
check the road, you've checked the lot and you're forgiving the fact that it doesn't.